Hello everybody. Today we're going to go over sway bars, specifically what they do for you and why you need them. All right, I'm Bill. And I'm Charles. And uh, we're going to go over sway bars today, like exactly what do they do, why do you want them, um, and how do they work. This is just an example of what we see on a lot of muscle cars. This is a front bar in particular, but really common to not only muscle cars, but they put these in everything. Everything now has sway bars in it. Oh yeah, I mean, if, if you want a modern car to handle, you know, when you're going down the road and you don't want it to be like some old pickup or car from the 60s, yeah, it's gonna have to have a sway bar in it. Yep, and the way these work is really simple. This is a torsion spring. From here to here, this is your torsion spring length. So what that's, what that's doing is these arms are your lever arm. As the suspension articulates and has different, uh, different angles to your control arms, it is twisting this bar, right? And in twisting that bar, you are adding spring rate to your outside corner. So can you explain that a little bit? So, as, so when you start, let's say you're gonna make a corner to the left, and of course your vehicle is gonna naturally wanna to lean to the right. And so that's gonna compress the suspension on the right side, forcing this bar upwards. Well, at the same time, that's converting to rotation through the sway bar and trying to do the same thing to this side. It's trying to raise it. But the car is dropping that side. Yes. So if the car's leaning, it's picking up this side and dropping that side. So yeah. you're getting this change in angle between your control arms. Yeah, so this takes, it tries to take all of that out. It's trying to push the right side down and lift, lift the left side up at the same time, therefore taking your vehicle and leveling it out. There are um, different, most of these that we make or everything that we make here is made to fit a, a factory application. So it's gonna be a bolt-on upgrade for whatever your, your hot rod of choice is. Uh, and with that comes some of this you know, this shape and this uh, geometry of the tube is largely packaging. It's like, how does it actually fit the chassis? What does it have to go around? What does it have to clear? But this length right here from here to here, that's your lever arm. Yes, and so the longer it is, the less force it's gonna put on your suspension, the shorter it is, the more force. Just like the diameter of the bar, the bigger the bar is, the, the more torsional spring rate it's gonna have. And there's even some, um, sway bars out there that have like multiple holes in them which basically changes the length of your arm to make it more adjustable so the bar itself maintains its spring rate essentially but by having a longer or shorter lever arm you're changing how far that will twist when that load transfers from side to exactly side. yeah if you boil it all down what a sway bar is doing is it is adding spring rate to your outside corner yep yep and it's it's trying to rewrite your vehicle so it's leaning less and by leaning less you're going to maintain the, your tire contact patch on the road and you're not going to cause your tires to basically you know especially your outside tire you're not going to make it lean outwards you're going to maintain that contact patch of the road so therefore you're going to maintain traction and be able to go through a corner you know faster and you know with less sway Yep, and there, there's a couple of different ways of doing sway bars. Most of them, especially in the front, will mount to the chassis using two straps like this, and then they'll have an end link that runs from your sway bar down to your control arm. There are slightly different styles of that, especially when you get into the rear of cars, uh, particularly in solid axles. Um, but it's all doing the same thing. It's taking two suspension components that are articulating opposite of each other, and it's using that opposition to twist a bar yeah, and, and like you were saying before, like this connects to the lower control arm. And on some strut cars, it actually connects directly to the strut itself. Handling situation, we've talked a lot about, but in, what about a drag racing situation? Or what, are, what do you do for sway bars in drag racing? So in drag racing, you don't normally run a front sway bar because one, you're not gonna be making corners on a, on a drag strip. Well, at least you hope you don't. <laughs> and, because you, you're, get, you're getting extra resistance to this and you, you want that sus front suspension to move as easily as possible and you don't want that extra weight from a sway bar on the front. 
But on the rear, on the other hand, you do want a sway bar because that helps to prevent the car from twisting excessively under the torque of the motor trying to turn, you know, lean the car. And with a sway bar, you're gonna help keep that body level and you're also gonna help maintain even pressure on both of your rear tires yep. for traction. Yeah, a drag car, a, a hard launching drag car has a very strong uh, ten, not even a tendency, it, it is trying to rotate the axle uh, about the pinion. It's trying to rotate it around the pinion. So there again, you're having like this difference in angle between the chassis and the axle. So a rear sway bar, rear anti-roll bar, they, they call them different things sometimes in different disciplines, but it's doing the same thing. It's just trying to take what the car is perceiving as some sort of a twist and is trying to untwist it. Long story short, sway bars work by uh, at giving you some spring rate when the suspension's articulating. Uh, they're very easy to install. Uh, and they also, one thing we haven't touched on yet, is a large sway bar can allow you to run a different spring rate. Can you ex explain that a little bit? So uh, a lot of times you run a heavier spring rate to you know, prevent the car from you know, leaning over too far. But with, a, with a larger sway bar, you can, you can basically take some of the spring rate out because you've got that extra spring rate when you're going into corners where you really need it. Where on a, when you're on a straightaway and just hitting bumps, you don't need all of that excess you know, spring rate at your, on the corners of the car. When both arms move up at the same time in the same direction, the bar does nothing. Yeah, it's the just bar there. doesn't, yeah, because it's not trans, it's not twisting, if it's not twisting this bar, it's not changing your spring rate whatsoever. And small movements, you know, one tire hits a bump compared to the other, small little movements are not gonna provide enough twist through the bar to actually change your spring rate much at all. So in a street car application in particular where you do where ride quality is of high importance, you can run a lower spring rate if you've got a stiffer sway bar. Yes, yeah. Big bar, soft spring is a common, common uh, tuning strategy. So I hope this demystified some things about uh, sway bars for you. They're pretty simple devices uh, in all actuality. They're, they're easy to install, they, uh, they bolt right on and they add a lot to the way your car works, so. I would say it's one of the biggest things that can help with handling of a car. Especially if you've got an older car from the 60s that doesn't even have a sway bar on it. It'll make a huge difference in how that car handles. Check them out, go to our website, get a hold of us on social media. We're here to answer your questions if you got them.